17, and uh, we're going to start at 17, verse 18, all right? So Proverbs 17, 18, as we talked about before, we're going to kind of go verse by verse in, in this chapter. The next chapter, we're going to start grouping some of it, but not all of it, because the next chapter also kind of, you know, standalone kind of stuff, okay? Mm -hmm. 17, verse 18. 17, verse 18. Thank you. Right? 17, verse 18. All right, so we're starting now. So, okay. In verse, so everybody understand that Proverbs is a collection that was put together by who? Solomon. Solomon. Solomon, absolutely. It doesn't mean that Solomon wrote them all. It meant that there's wise saying that Solomon was responsible. He consolidated the wise sayings, all right? Because Solomon is considered to be a wise man, right? Why do you think, why do people call Solomon wise? And is it true that Solomon was the wisest man that ever lived? Does the Bible really say he was the wisest man that ever lived, or do we conclude that based on what the Bible says about him? Uh, this is a conclusion that we draw. Solomon actually was not as wise as we give him credit for. Oh, no. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that means you're not as wise as I give you credit no, for. No, that's different. <laughs> My name ain't Solomon. My name ain't Mike. <laughs> no, let me tell you why I'm saying that, okay? Let me ask you a question. If, if you inherited a million dollars, okay, and was broke, at your death, would you consider that person to be wise? No, no, no. Well, see, think about this, for example. Solomon inherited a kingdom that had vast riches. Vast riches. When Solomon left, they were in a deficit. In fact, here's what we know, that Solomon taxed the people heavily because Solomon had all these wives he was trying to impress, right? And so he taxed them heavily. And so when Solomon died, Solomon's son, the people told his son, say, listen, your father's dead now. Now your father taxed us heavily. And we're tired of paying these high taxes. So why don't, if you relax the taxes, we'll follow you. But he inherited great wealth, okay? So I'm saying that you know, the way we look at people who are wise, we consider people who are wise to often be people that understand how to manage their money, right? Now, how many of you all think a wise man needs over 300 women? You don't even want to listen to 300 women. <laughs> no, you don't want to listen to them. <laughs> What we give Solomon credit for, we give him credit because he made some wise decisions, obviously. So we give him credit for making some wise decisions. But that doesn't mean that he was considered to be the wisest king. Because actually he wasn't considered to be the wisest king. Okay. All right. But then we're not going to go through kings, though. But I just was setting the stage for you, okay? All right. So now, if you look at Proverbs and you look at 18, here's what the verse says. That a man void of understanding strike his hands and become a surety in the presence of his friends. Right? Now, uh, ladies, uh, I want y'all to pay specific. It, it, how many women in here, how many ladies in here have, 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 have grown children? Okay, this is for you. Okay, even though it doesn't say it that way, this is for you. This is what this really means. Anybody that co signs for somebody is crazy. <laughs> That's what this is saying, right? When it says that a man void of understanding, so anyone, so anyone who does this does not understand human nature, right? So if you're void of understanding, to strike your hands means what we shake on it means I agree that I'm going to stand in surety for you because what? You are a friend of mine. Here's what you know. If they don't have good credit, there's a reason why they don't have good credit. Because they didn't pay the bills. So what makes you think if they didn't pay somebody else, they're going to pay you? All right? So what's the moral of that story? If you loan money, money to somebody and they don't pay you, don't you come crying to me and telling me to go get your money. All right? You need to call the local loan shark, tell him go there and beat him up and get the money back. Okay? 
<laughs> All right? Okay, now why do you think I said, uh, mothers, this applies to you all? Because y'all the ones always co-signing for your son or for your daughter. And you know they're wrong. They, that's the reason why you're co-signing for them. And then you're mad because then they're your credit messed up. Right? So you don't mess your credit up for somebody. You help them establish their own credit. Yeah. Isn't there a scripture that speaks to that? This will speak to it. I need another one. What's the one that talks about cosine itself? You know, it doesn't say the word cosine, but it kind of explains what. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, there are, but I don't know how you get any clearer than this when it says that you're void of understanding if you become surety. Surety means what? You put your stuff on the line for somebody, which means you cosign. So you can't get more. It's saying if you do that, you lack understanding. Or what? You stupid. <laughs> you know, that's what he's saying. So, what, what, what's the other moral of the story? Don't ask me to co-sign for it, because I ain't stupid. I ain't co-signing for you. Okay? Don't ask me to loan you no money. Why? Because if you could pay me back, you wouldn't be asking me for the money in the first place. <laughs> huh? How do I know that? How do I help? I, this is what you do. When you, this is what you do. You put them in your car. You, you take them down to the Burger King. You tell them walk to the counter. Ask the person for an application. When they give the application, tell them fill it out. Okay. And then if they don't hire them on the spot, tell them come back the next day and stand in front of the person and say, "Excuse me, do you have any openings yet?" And if they don't get a job, tell them come back the next day and stand in line and say, "Excuse me, do you have any openings yet?" And they keep on doing it until they get a job. And it pay off. Okay? That's how I got my first job. It wasn't at a Burger King, though. It was at a car wash. Okay? And I put in my application. I was 14 years old. I put the application in. And I, you know, then we had pay phones in the school. I went to the pay phone. And I called the man up and said, tell me who I was. Have you considered my application? He said, we don't hire kids. And I said, okay, click, hung the phone up. The next day, I called him right back. This is Michael Jenkins. Have you got some application? He said, I told you we don't hire minors. I said, okay, hung up. Called him right back the next day. He said, what do you want the job for anyway? I need the money. And he said, I tell you what, come in, I'll give you the job. And I came in, he gave me the job. You know, persistent. You ever heard the saying, Give a man a fish, you eat for one day. Yep. Teach him a fish, you eat forever. Yep. See, mothers, not all mothers, mothers have a tendency to give you the fish. <laughs> not teach you how to fish, right? So you don't, you don't just always, let me sign for you. you let, me, let me help you get your own credit. So you start them out young and helping them get their own line of credit, right? So rather than you buying this you know, $300 TV, outright, get a man $200 and put the rest, you know, on a monthly payment plan, and that's how they build their credit up. And then you teach them how to do it, okay? So, and in any event, now, I'm not telling you not to do it. You do what you want to do, you're grown, so you do what you want to do, but it says here, if you do it, you avoid of understanding. Means what? You stupid. <laughs> that's what void of understanding means, doesn't it? All day long, twice on Thursday. Okay. All right. He lo he loveth transgression that loveth strife, and he that exalted his gate seeketh destruction. Okay. Now <laughs> I like that right there. He that loveth transgression, he loveth transgression that loveth strife. He that exalted his gate seeketh destruction. What you know you know you know what a gate is to a person. Okay, what's a gate normally? What's a gate normally? It's something that keeps you in or out. Right, something that keeps you in or out. So what's your gate? Your heart. No, your mouth. No. This is what this talking about. <laughs> your mouth, okay? He that open, in his heart of his gate, he that is so proud he's always boasting on himself. Right? He, he said, listen, that, 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 that um, people who, you ever heard this, you ever heard the saying, don't write a check that your behind can't cash? Uh, well, yeah, that's what this is talking about. That kind of person that's always bragging about themselves, but can't live up to what they are bragging about. Okay? 
It's saying because when you when you put yourself on a pedestal, mm -hmm. it's easier for you to fall. Mm -hmm. So you always walk in humble. Mm -hmm. That's right. You always walk in humble. Okay. He that twenty. He that have a froward heart findeth no good. He that have a for, for perverse tongue falleth into mischief. Right. And so, what is a froward heart? Contrary to God. Right. Or difficult, com, difficult to deal with. Right. right. Contrary. Difficult to deal with. Right. Mm -hmm. So, a person has a froward heart. Is somebody who's difficult to deal with. Somebody who's always obnoxious. That kind of thing. Right. And so. You're saying what? If your heart is that way, that's how you are. Okay? Now, let's take it from the opposite side of the coin. Okay? Because we all know folk that got froward hearts. And it's telling you that a person with a froward heart is no good. Okay? Right? Yeah. You know what it says? Yeah. A person that's got a mean heart is no good. Right. A person that got a contrary spirit is no good. Right? Now, we know that based on what Solomon said, and we all say, well, we believe the Bible, that the Bible is true 100% without error, right? right. So then why do why we keep working with them kind of people? <laughs> like you said, because it's crazy. Right, because he said we're already crazy, right? So he <laughs> said, what? <laughs> when you know somebody is that way, when you know that they are the kind of person where they are always messy, you know, I guess we use the term messy, he said, listen, you better leave them alone because the end is always going to be bad for you. You know, if you think about this, 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 um, this, this chapter, you can look at it in two ways. One, you can look at it from a negative saying, don't do this, or from the positive saying, what, be careful of other folk that do act like this. I can look at Solomon from this standpoint because I don't consider myself to be froward. I may be, but I don't consider myself to be froward, okay? And so maybe I'm what? Maybe I am just have a haughty spirit and think more of myself than I should. But anyway, I don't consider myself that way. So I can look at Solomon in this way and say, when I'm thinking about Proverbs, especially this particular chapter, to say, who should I avoid? Who should I avoid? Who should I stop hanging around? You know, who should I deal with? We call it a long handle spoon, right? Because if you don't, if you don't eliminate these folks from your life, you are always mad, and you're not mad at you're more mad at yourself than you are with them. Because you keep saying to yourself, I don't know why I did that. I don't know why I still had, I don't know why I still let them in my club. I don't know why. I don't know. I should. I should. I didn't I tell you not to tell her I was home. I don't know why I answered the phone. You know, you saw the name up there. You saw the ID, and you're always calling me. Hello. No. If you saw the name up there, you let them go to voicemail and then delete, delete. <laughs> That's what he's that's what he's, that's that's what he's talking about. Now, twenty one and twenty five go together, so we'll put twenty one. This is the one verse with the two the couple verse we're gonna add together. But verse twenty one and verse twenty five go together, all right? So here's what verse twenty one says: He that begetteth a fool doeth it to his sorrow, and the father of a fool hath no joy. Twenty five says: A foolish son is a grief to his father, and bitterness to her that bear him. All right? Now, put them together. I mean, you know, on the surface, it sounds pretty simple, right? That, that means, well, if you got a fool for a child, you know, you're not going to feel good about it. Ah, it's a little deeper than that. Because know what it says. He that begetteth a fool. How do you beget something? How do you beget something? Huh? Well, yeah, you're definitely accepting it, right? So if I'm accepting it, what does that say? I'm the fool, you know why? Because I trained them to be the fool. So what they're saying is that, if, really what they're saying, if you raise up a fool, expect to have sorrow. If you raise up a fool, expect to have sorrow. And not only are you gonna be hurt, but the, it's saying, say, number 25 says what? And to the to, to the mother, she gonna be a little upset too. Now, I'm gonna tell you something. Here's what here's how I look at life. If your children causing you to be 
um, discombobulated. Mm -hmm. uh, that's <coughs> motherhood. Huh? Well, that's according motherhood. according according to uh, proverb, it's not it's not how motherhood have to be. Every now and then, your children will discombobulate. No, not true, not true. Let me say, this, remember what it says, it says, he that begetteth a fool, who is saying you don't have to get a fool. No. You, don't, you, don't, you don't have to have a fool in your house. You don't have to have a child as a fool. No. What it's saying is that, is that we, because of our own inability to follow the <laughs> instruction that the Bible lays out for raising our children, yeah. we train them up to be... I won't necessarily say a fool because y'all won't y'all be mad if I say your children are fools. <laughs> so I would say we raise them up to be difficult. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't start when they are seven. It starts when, it starts when they are seven days. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because because the little the little seven day old knows something. Yep. I scream and they, they came. Yep. Right. <laughs> and once they learn that, I scream and they came, they use it every time from that point on. I scream, ODU. Y'all get y'all, I want y'all listen to this now, all right? Don't be coming to my office talking about my child being something, okay? <laughs> See, because we raise them up that way. And then when they get older, we expect them to change. Yeah. Then they bring them into the office and say, Can you talk to my child? Can I talk to him? <laughs> you done had him for 16 years. <laughs> and you want me to talk to him in an hour, please? You better go back out there somewhere. <laughs> because because you, you raised him up. You, you beget him the fool, right? So for the parents, <laughs> many of us, it's too late for because our kids are grown or they're already teenagers, right? But it's help with grandparents. Let me tell you something. Biggest culprit. Mm -hmm. The biggest culprit is grandparents. Mm -hmm. Because grandparents will help raise up a fool because they ain't got to deal with that person no more. <laughs> and then you, the parent, got to put up with the grandparent deal. And then they say something too, like, I'm going to tell grandma. You know what I be saying? Now don't tell grandma, pack your clothes up, moving grandma home. <laughs> then grandma be going to get, get bad. You know? Well, they can come live with me. You're right, they can. But they can't come back and live with me once you get them. Simple. And I ain't paying child support either. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Now, but I mean, I'm, so, I mean, I, I say that you know, like you know, with levity, but I say that because we need to understand that, right? Yeah. And we need to now we need to teach our our offspring so that they will teach their offspring, That's right. right? Because you know, if you think about if you think about if you think about um, the differences between generations, they have increasingly become more disrespectful. Mm -hmm. They have increasingly become, you know, more frustrating to, you know, to deal with. I like the word entitled. Right. Well, and, and you know why? It's because we what? Yeah. <coughs> we beget them. See, we beget them because we have not taught our offspring to teach their offspring. You know, and, and I know teachers get this all the time. Because if you've been teaching over a period of years, you know when you first got in the system, the kids probably said, yes, ma'am, no, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir. Now they say, what? What? I did my mama on you. What? You better not look at me like that. I did my mama. And they, they got a cell phone, too. They got, they got, they got an iPhone 10, right? <laughs> you got an iPhone 3. They got an iPhone 10. <laughs> no? Well, they might get get 11 now. So, but see, it's because of what we do. So I'm saying we, we, we are the ones that are doing this to generations. We are the ones that need to say, you know what? Ah, we can't be begetting fools around here. You know, we have to kind of reverse that trend. That means we have to teach. That means grandparents have to start teaching, and you know, so that parents understand how you doing today, money. Come on, I like that. You have that. That ain't working for. That's for you, man. That's why I can't do that. That's working. Okay. Oh, you look good. That's working for you. Everybody can't walk in like you said he walked in. Just 
Claro que sí. A merry heart. That's what that's T. I was getting y'all right here. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drive the bone. Right? Straight up, you know what Solomon was saying? Find laughter. Find a reason to smile. Find joy in everything. You know, you know what? I can't tell you how many people don't like jokes. No, I'm serious. I know. There's a lot of people that, you know, if you're joking with them, they're like, why are you, why are you putting me down? Mm -hmm. Anybody putting you down? We're just trying to find some joy in this situation, right? Okay, we broke. We're going to get put out. <laughs> why sit there and l lament it? We're going to get put out whether we joke about it yeah. or whether we don't joke about it. Yeah. So, might to joke about it. <laughs> I got the front seat. You got the back seat. I got the front seat. You might have good joke about it. Huh? Because either way, what? We just sleeping in that car. Yeah. <laughs> but, but if you, at least if you can find some humor in it, you know, it, it, it helps you get through the situation. Because if you can't find humor in it, y'all going to be in there fighting. Yeah. Right? So a broken spirit drives up the bones. And what he's saying is this, is that you can, you can pretty much get through anything in life if you can find some way to put humor in it. But if you don't, it's going to get you so depressed yeah. that it's going to wipe you out. Yeah. Okay? Right? And that's why we need to try to find humor in everything. Okay? That's, you know, I can tell you about me, you know, just for example. Uh, I think I've mentioned yours before. But um, when I first became the pastor, I was maybe six, seven, eight months or so. Anyway, someone's happening in the church that was just, just crazy, you know. And so I was talking to a group of, you know, the, at that time I was real young. I was in my early 30s. Actually, I was um, 31 years old at this time. And so the people I'm talking to were currently my age that I am right like now. You know, they're like 30, 35 years older than me. And so I'm talking to um, um, the, the, the folk, and, but I'm smiling and I'm laughing. And so one of the ladies said, um, well, that must not be too bad because, you know, you're laughing about it. And Mrs. Robinson, I don't know if you all know Beth, Beth Robinson, it was her grandmother. She said, oh, you haven't figured him out yet? He's laughing, that means he's mad. <laughs> 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 you know, because th and that, that's, that's true, you know. If, 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 if sometimes the more I'm laughing when I'm talking to you, the more I'm thinking, you just as crazy as you can go. <laughs> 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 <You know? Excuse> me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but notice that I didn't talk about your mom, so that means what? Everything's all right. <laughs> right? <laughs> no, but I won't laugh when I called you out, son. Remember? I won't, I won't laugh. I won't laugh. I had a straight face. <laughs> but you break that uh, thing right there. <laughs> <laughs> a wicked man, but I'm serious about that though, really true. Always find humor in any disappointment. Always find humor in any disappointment. Don't let stuff beat you down because you know what? It ain't gonna change one bit. You know, hope, hope, you know, let you know that not finding humor won't change the situation. If you can find humor, it don't change where you are. But at least it'll, it'll help you get through it. Right? And the other thing is this: it's hard to find a solution when you are depressed. It's hard to find a viable solution when you are depressed. When your heart is light, it's easier to find a viable solution, and it's easier to find a solution that causes the least amount of pain for everybody. See, when you're depressed, you don't look to find a solution that causes the least amount of pain for other people. You only find to save yourself. But when I cause pain for somebody else, it ends up coming right back to me. That's a few verses, you know, we just finished covering that part, right? So you always want to find a solution that causes the least amount of pain for everybody. And that requires a merry heart. Okay? All right. A wicked man take it for gift out of the bosom to pervert the ways of judgment. Okay, now any of y'all, anybody seen, have any of you all seen CNN or yeah. seen the news today? Yeah. Okay, well, if you've seen the news or seen it today, this verse right here, which was 
what you want to do is this: take this verse, okay, copy it, then go on Twitter and put a picture of Donald Trump right in front of him. Because that's what this, this verse is about. Absolutely. This verse is talking about bribery. Okay, mm -hmm. it, it was a wicked man taken for gift, right? Mm -hmm. Taken for gift, which is a bribery, right? Mm -hmm. uh, out of the bosom to pervert the ways of judgment. Mm -hmm. I'm bribing you. So that what you will give me a favorable response, right. Right, to revert judgment, right? And he's saying what well, that's what wicked folk do, because wicked folk don't want justice. They want themselves to always be right. Yeah. I mean, of course, some of us don't want justice either, but don't make you necessarily wicked because you ain't trying to bribe nobody. You just get you know want fair and equitable. Okay, wisdom. Wisdom is before him that have understanding, but the eyes of the fools are in the ends of the earth. Okay, again, it's straightforward, right? What, that, 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 um, <coughs> people who are, uh, people who know them, know themselves, people who know themselves, that which you need to become wise is always available to you, okay? When you understand yourself, you understand your weaknesses, you understand your strengths. You know yourself well enough to know that you don't know some stuff. When you know you don't know some stuff, you're always looking to take, to, to, to you know, to uh, fill that void, okay? So people of understanding, wisdom is always close by because they're always seeking it. Right, and for 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 the person that is uh, 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 a fool, right? The eyes of fool. The person that's a fool. Um, wisdom is at the ends of the earth. What he's saying is that for them, they will never get it. So it's it's, it's if is at the ends of the earth because people who who who, who don't know what they don't know never they, know they to know look it. for something, mm -hmm. right? So. If, for people who always think they know everything, he said that they, they are fools. So they don't even seek to get more information. They don't seek knowledge, and therefore that's why I say it ends, ends of the earth, meaning it's hard for them to obtain, okay? Because what makes you wise is to know what you don't know, right? And know that you don't know. And let me say this while I'm talking about what you don't know, okay? Right? Here's, here's, I mean, this is simple stuff. All proverbs are simple, isn't it? I mean, it's just so straightforward. It just, you, you have to ask yourself, why were we not doing this already? Right? You know, why? Because if you did this already, what? Life would have been a whole lot better, wouldn't it? Right? Yeah, but it's so simple. Here's the thing. Here's what Solomon also is saying. This is practical, down to earth, how to apply this thing. He's saying, listen, two things. Number one, stop acting like you know everything. Stop trying to prove that you know everything. Because mm -hmm. anytime you try to prove you know everything, you never look for what you don't know. Number one, right? right? So that means you never gain more knowledge because you never look for more knowledge. The other thing is this. Never seek advice from somebody that has no experience in that which you are looking for. Okay? Now, for example, right? For example, never seek advice from somebody who can't keep a man <laughs> about how to get a man. <laughs> oh, and I'm going to say the same thing. Never seek advice from somebody about how to make, you know, to make their their, 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 their their wife happy from someone who is in an unhappy home, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why I said the other way first is because, generally speaking, <coughs> women tend to take advice from the stupidest people. I said, generally speaking, I didn't say all y'all. I said, generally speaking, I'm not talking about you all. I'm talking about other women that don't attend this Bible study because you all <laughs> tend to. <laughs> so you all don't do that. Right? Right? 
but but generally speaking, right? Generally speaking, a, a woman has no problem listening to her friend who ain't got a man, who can't get a man, and who don't know man even want. But yet, she'll say something like this, dude, you know he doing you wrong. You need to get rid of him. You're all right, if I was you, I wouldn't put up with that. I, Cause you can't put up with it. Cause you ain't got nobody willing to treat you wrong. At least I got somebody willing to treat me wrong. <laughs> Chance he might treat me right, right? Uh, I'm just huh? You giving advice right there? No, we. This is me for interrupting. I was telling him I could put up with some stuff because after a while, that tool ain't gonna work like it used to. So I'm gonna bring him in. Girl, t- <laughs> girl, girl, t- tell the truth, brother. Tell me that talk. Yeah, I was on the roller coaster, but I'm on the ferry now. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. See that? And, and you know why y'all can take her advice? Because she's on the ferry now. <laughs> she's been there. She's done that. <laughs> see, see, you take advice from her that day. You know what? You know what she because you know what she found out. This is what she found out. Y'all ever been in Las Vegas? Yes. Yes. You ever played the slot machine? Yes. The worst thing you can do is put $10 in and walk away. Because the next person come out for the court and ching ching. Ding 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 ding. See, we what y'all to do. Y'all are invested that joker for 20 years. Right? And then get mad and leave. Wait a minute, he can really die a few more years. Stay right there. You leave it when he when the social security about to cash in. Stay right there. It's too late then. If you not put up with him for that long, why are you leaving now? I'm just trying to tell you that, see? But see, uh, that's, 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 see, but, but see, that I'm just trying to tell you, same thing about money. Why, why the folk that ain't got no money always trying to give advice to folk that got money? They ain't got a dime, but I was trying to give, let me tell you something. You need to invest, I was watching the money channel the other day, and you need to invest, I need to invest, or, or this, they borrow money from you, and then you say this, well, I ain't got, I don't, I don't know if I can loan you the money, well, you can loan the money if you take, all you got to do is don't pay this bill right now. And, uh, then, then, you know, they're telling you how not to pay something. And you're wrong. How am I going to take your advice to loan you some money when you, you know. You, know. you ain't got no money to pay your bill. Right, yeah. But that's what they do, see. So, anyhow. <laughs> Mike just texted me and wanted to know if the camera was rolling tonight. <laughs> should, I, should I text him back and say yes? Tell him we got to go. Okay. <laughs> we got the red light and we got the green light. <laughs> red light, green light, we got to go. Okay, I'm going to text him back and say yes. All right. Isn't that a conscientious gentleman? Yes. He's in class and still concerned about Bible study. Yeah, you know what he's going to get if he don't get the Bible study. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they are almost ready for the outcome. Huh? So that's why you almost ran me off the road. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. You're going to get class. That's why. Yeah. And I ain't let him off early to go to school either. So you got a frolic heart. Huh? No. I'm going to frolic heart. No. You made me lose my space. No, 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 no. Remember what I told you. I'm not enabling him. Right. I'm teaching him. Sometimes you got to cut people a break. Ain't not got time to be stopping my King. Go to class. Go to class. Make a lunch and then eat the lunch. Let me tell you something. I won't ask nobody to do nothing I wouldn't do. Okay? Now, I ate, not only did I eat in my car on the way to class, but when I was an undergrad, I would leave a job as a security guard. Okay? Be driving from, you know where the, ca- the, ca- the campground, holiday in campground Virginia Beach? Mm-hmm. Be driving from the campground, changing clothes in my car. Mm-hmm. And I had a manual shift. But by the time I got to school, I had my regular clothes on <laughs> and be good to go. And if it was good enough for me, yeah, it was good enough for him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, uh, how many people have done that? 
I need it every day. I did it when I was till I changed in school jobs. and had to go back to work and stuff. Yeah. So well, then why not let him off early? Just eating. To go to school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he in grad school. He ain't gotta be there on time. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, break. Huh? Okay, I let him leave. I ain't let me run. I ain't let me lie to you. I ain't let me lie to you. Unless he bribed me. <laughs> you need to read verse 23. <laughs> okay, what verse am I on? I forgot. That's what I mean. Oh, what is it? 26. 26, thank you. Okay. Oh, I did 25 already. So I'm on 26. Also. No, we didn't do 25. Uh, you did yes, 25, yes, I did 25. I did 21 and 25 yeah. together. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 You know, because some, again, you know, I hate to say this, but you know, our president is such a good example, right? There's a, for example, that we have a, what we call a whistleblower, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what, what did the whistleblower do? He said, let me tell something because the country needs to know this. Exactly. Now, our president is trying to punish the person mm -hmm. by saying he's a traitor and all this kind of stuff mm -hmm. so that, you know, to ruin I'm saying him, but it could be her. That's a, a pot calling the kettle black. But I'm just no. But what he's doing, I'm all, you're right. But but everything he's doing is trying to ruin the guy. He's trying to punish the guy right. for he's doing good, right. right? And you don't punish people for doing good, right? And that's what he's saying. You know, <coughs> if you do, the Lord will take care of that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. okay? And so he also says that what? Or you, and you don't strike princes, princesses for equity, meaning you don't get mad at people who are above you when they pronounce judgment on you that is right, that is equitable, okay? So if, if someone, if I do something, and people oftentimes do this, right? If I rob a bank and they give me 20 years, I shouldn't get mad. Why? It was equitable judgment. You know what? I should have got 20 years because I robbed the bank. Any me get mad at the judge and want to go and shoot him? And say, you get, you lock, you locking me up? No, 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 it's equitable. So when you get equitable judgment, he's saying what? Let it go. Let it go. You, you got what you deserve. You know, move on. Right? Okay. He that hath knowledge spareth his words, and a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. So, you know, those who those who are in the know, those who are in the know, he's saying, speaks what they know. That's what he says, you know, their, their word. They don't speak stuff they don't, don't know because they know what they don't know. Right. right? And you can tell when folks don't know something, why? Because they won't shut up. <laughs> and you know they don't know. And they know you know they don't know. So they keep trying to convince you that they know. Mm -hmm. Right? And he says what? Not only that, but the man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. And an excellent spirit means that, he's, that people who understand what's going on they don't get carried away. They don't. They they, they are calm and, and they do things in a calm and cool manner. Right? That's what an excellent spirit means. Okay. So, uh, and the last one is good for everybody. Okay. This is what my 11th grade history teacher taught us. But I don't know if he knew this psalm or not. But he taught us this. All right. Which was even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise. And he that shut up his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. So he's just saying, simply listen, as my 11th, 11th grade history teacher told us, you can be silent and appear to be ignorant, or you can speak and remove all doubt. And so, and, and so a, 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 what Solomon is saying in a wise way is simple. If you don't know, keep your mouth shut. And nobody will know that you don't know. In fact, oftentimes your silence will be construed as you are someone who does know, but just don't want to hurt the person's feelings. You know, and 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 you know, my my um, nephew by marriage, you know, we were in you know in a debate. It's oftentimes debate with my you know my siblings, 
And we're in a debate about who's right more and this kind of thing. And so my nephew says, well, I can tell you something about him, talking about me. He <laughs> says, I can't tell you he's always right, but I can tell you I've never heard him be wrong. You know, now, and, you know, I take that in. You know, it, it may not be true, but, you know, that was his perception. <clears throat> I believe his perception was that because, generally speaking, generally speaking, if I don't know something, I'll be quiet. And now some people will interpret that as if he just don't want to get in the fray. But sometimes it ain't got nothing to do with that. It's that I know I don't know. It. So I'll just smile. <laughs> <laughs> and then my Man. smile, people think that means that you wrong, and he know you wrong, and that's why he ain't saying that he don't want to embarrass you. And the truth be, I ain't got a clue what they call it. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, any questions about 710? No? We good? Okay, well, we can start 18 then. But let me drop this on you right quick. Well, never mind. Never mind. Uh, no, I was going to ask you a question, but I won't. I won't. Uh, no, we never know. We know it works that way every time. <laughs> well, what I was going to do before I started a new chapter was ask you if you wanted to start a different book. I'm happy with the Proverbs. Proverbs. Okay. No, I mean, it's, it's fine with me. I just was wondering. That's why I was going to ask you. Yeah, this is a good Okay, all right. You didn't ask me what book? Why? What do you want to go? I mean, I, 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 was, I was thinking about Hebrews, but we don't have to. I mean, Proverbs is fine with me. You know, it's fine with me. Okay, through, through, through desire, a man having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom, okay? Uh, again, th this, this is, some of it we're gonna do individually, some of it we're gonna put together, but 18 is, is really straightforward. I mean, it really is straightforward. Um, I, I hope it's straightforward to you by now, put it like that, okay? If you haven't read 18, of course, hmm. it ain't straightforward yet. Once you read it, it'll be straightforward. Okay? All, all Solomon is saying here is this, is that um, that that people that want knowledge, people that want wisdom, understand that the best way to get it is to remove yourself from negative influences, so you can let that good and wise information sink in. Okay, and that you can't hang around with everybody. Right. Okay, that's really, that's really what it's saying, right? Uh, because if you, if you, if you, some, sometimes the more folk you got around you, the more stuff that gets in you and interferes with your getting what you need. You know, you gotta kind of push folk away sometimes. You know, to to, 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 to get what you need and, and to keep what you need. If the other side to this thing is this, is that, and just from a practical, you know, how to apply this concept is that oftentimes when you're trying to understand something so you can better yourself and you're trying to focus, you never know when you're around people how they feel about you will affect how they talk about what you want to do. Okay. In other words, you could be trying to go to the moon with your life, right? And you can be trying to get information and say, well, how can I get to the moon with my life? And so you can be around other people, you know, or one, you know, some of your friends or something talking about it and so on and so on. And your thought process is they're gonna give you more information to help you get to the moon. Mm -hmm. What you don't know is how jealous they may be of you. And so you may have a wonderful idea and they may say, that ain't gonna work. That ain't gonna work. Not because it ain't gonna work. It's because they don't want you to go to the moon, and you won't know that. Okay, but because you sought them, so that's why he's saying sometimes you got to get by yourself and analyze and get information and think, get it for yourself, so then you can apply it yourself. Because the best way to the best the best teacher in the, that case is not them, but you. Okay, does that make sense to you? Okay. 
Yeah, please do. Um, I'm, I'm going through a terrible situation right now with my family and my mother having Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. and you said last week for your sermon that you, know, you kind of have to look at them in the back window. Well, my mom doesn't have very much longer to live. And the thing is, when I don't have my brothers and sisters in my life, I do well. And now we're all trying to undermine me. And um, it's based on their uh, insecurities, maybe, or the fact that they know I know what I'm talking about. I've done this kind of work. Um, they're, they're arguing, fighting about mom and, and being power of attorney and stuff. And this is why I'm, I, I want to separate myself. I want to say, see you guys. And I'm in that situation where I can't because there will be nobody looking out for my mother without having their egos in the way. No, I got you. And, and, and verse 19 addresses what you're talking about in in, in, a, in a similar way, okay? You know, you know. I know we normally start at verse 1. Let's say drop the 19 since you threw it out there, okay? Thank you. If you look at verse 19, here's what it says. A brother offended mm -hmm. is harder to be won than a strong city. And their contentions are like the bars of a castle, mm -hmm. right? So, it, you know, that's what you described is just what this is talking about. Is that you know if if you have a, a someone who the closer a person is to you, if you say something or if you do something that they that they are offended by, like sometimes they have low self esteem and you say something and so therefore their low self esteem kicks in and they're like, oh, you think you better than everybody, you think you know da 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 da. da. It's saying mm -hmm. what it's harder for you to pull them back into your graces. I don't and, want but, them no, I'm, I'm not saying you feel, <laughs> but I'm just saying, this is saying it's harder for you to get them to understand, you know, when I say pull them back to your good graces, I don't mean for y'all to be chummy chummy. I mean for them to come back and understand that they need to relax and let you carry on. You know what I'm saying? You know, that's what I'm saying. He says it's hard for you to win to, to, to win them over. You know, that's why I say it's what? It's harder to be won. To win them over don't necessarily mean that we are now, you know, back skipping and holding hands. It means that now they accept that I should be doing what I'm doing. It says harder for you to do that than it is for what? You to conquer a strong city, right? I mean, or I'll say it in the, in the, in the reverse, right? It's easy to conquer a strong city than to win them over, you know? You're right. It's easy. Right, they're it's, stupid. Well, <laughs> they are. Well, I, well, okay, I don't know them personally. <laughs> if but, you did, you'd say they're stupid. No, well, I, I'm, well, well I'm, all I'm doing is saying that yeah, that he addresses it here, right? Yeah. So, so what's his point in things? Is what is his point by by saying this here? Because he's making a statement saying this is a statement of fact. But why would he make it? He's making it for us to understand something. And that is what you're saying is that now that I know this, I know that there's a reason why they feel this way. So I have two choices. I'm gonna have to work extra, extra hard to get them to see the light. Because it just told you what? It's harder for you to get them to see the reality than it is They don't want to, to, to listen to me at all. Because I'm... No, I, 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 I get that part. <laughs> Shut up, Liz. He's smart. He's smart. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, He's saying why? Because their contentions are like the bars of a castle, yeah. meaning what you just said. The bars of a castle, what? Strong. They're designed to be impenetrable. So he's saying to us, what? You're just about wasting your time to try, is what he's saying. So therefore, the point that Solomon is making is you never frustrate yourself when you're confronted with something that you know cannot or will not be changed. Mm -hmm. Right? You just don't do it because that makes you as bad as they are. Mm -hmm. You know? So you don't seek um, anything but uh, to uh, either let it ride because they're not going to change and, you know, so on and so on. Okay? 
<laughs> I'm worried about my mom, that's all. No, I, I get I get that, but and that's the thing, is that that's what he's saying, right? That in other words, you move on irrespective of them. That's the point he's talking about. Thank you. You okay. move on irrespective of them because they're not going to change. That's what I'm trying to get to. Okay. You know? Thank you. See, see, I said right there in the Bible, right there, right there, right there. <laughs> right there in Psalm, right there in Psalm, Psalm, Proverbs, right? Um, I think I finished verse one, or did I? I know I read it, did we talk about it? Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay, so two, six, and seven kind of work together, okay? So we'll do two, six, and seven, and that'll probably take us to the end of the night, all right? So two says, a fool have no a fool have no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. Even though two, six, and seven are the same, are similar, two deserve special attention. Okay. Then six says, a fool's lips enter into contention, and his mouth calleth for strokes. Seven says, a fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are the snare of his soul. So six and seven talks about how foolish a fool is, right? It's saying basically, it's simply what? That, 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 um, <laughs> when a fool is, is talking, when a fool is analyzing things, when a fool is trying to explain or put their, put their way of doing things out there, all what they do will lead to one place, and that is their own destruction, yeah. right? It means that they don't end up paying the price one way or another, okay? Because uh, a fool only wants one thing, and that is their way. All right? And that's what it's saying. Now, I like to spend a little more time on two, because I just like the way Solomon phrases two. Although two, six, and seven kind of say the same thing, but two, I think, just kind of, you know, is, is, is just icing on the cake. A fool have no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. I like the last part. A fool has no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. So what? He's saying basically what? A fool does not seek, does not seek anything but one thing, and that's to be right. All a fool looks for is to convince you that they are right. And if they are right, they don't care about anything else. Their whole purpose is that they don't want to ever be seen as wrong or not knowing something, right? And I'm gonna tell you, if you think about people who are insecure, you think about people who have low self-esteem, they are, it, it's, it's almost like, you, you gotta, they, 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 you, two words you don't ever hear from them. I'm sorry. You don't hear that. They, they will show you they are sorry, but they won't just come out and say, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. Because they can't. But, well, they won't. And then again, they won't. And so what Solomon is saying is that because of that, they hurt their own selves. See, you know, in our, in, in our, in our quest to not be looked upon as not being smart, we hurt ourselves. And that's his point when he says where he leads to, uh, what's six say, that it leads uh, to call it for strokes. He's saying you end up hurting yourself. You end up getting the brunt. You end up getting your own beating when you don't accept that you know what? Okay, you didn't know, you didn't know. It's okay to acknowledge. You know what, I ain't know what I'm talking about. I'm sorry. Or, you know, rather than always trying to convince yourself and convince others that you are right. Think about how many people you know of that spend their whole time trying to convince you that they are right. And then if, they, if, if, if that don't work, they get somebody else and it goes to the, the first thing they do on the phone, call somebody else up. Let me tell you what just happened. It's because they want the person on the phone to agree that they are right. Like that makes them right. Just because the other fool agree with you, if a fool call a fool, both fools gonna say, yeah, you know what? You know, I, I'll get you, I did that same thing. And the, you think, let me tell you something right here. The fool will always call a fool. And they'll call somebody who they know is a fool. 
Because they know they call the wise person, they'll get the real deal, so they won't even call them up. They'll call you and say, oh, I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't mean to call you. I'm call the wrong person, I didn't call you. And if they do call you, and you give them some wise advice, don't just say, you don't know I shouldn't have called you no way. Because you'll never know. You, you always take it somebody else's side. Yeah. No, you trying to give them what? Good, yeah. solid information. Yeah. Now, so what is that saying for each of us? Listen, I, I say this all the time, and I'll say it again to you. I say it so many times. We have to stop worrying about being right. Stop worrying about when you are right, when you're trying to be right. What you do is you filter out everything the person is saying. Yeah. You discount it because in your mind it doesn't make sense because you just know you are right. So the feedback that you should have took in, you block out. Okay. Now, just because you are right, don't make the other person wrong. It just doesn't. Because in 99% of the things you deal with, there is no such thing as right and wrong. It's just my way and your way. That's all. You got one way of doing it, I got one way of doing it. It don't make me right, don't make you wrong. It means we got different ways of doing it. But when you're so busy in being right, you filter out my way because you label my way wrong. And you end up hurting me in the evening. It just always does. So what Solomon says is, listen, don't, don't, don't worry about being right. Don't worry about discovering your own heart. You already know your own. In other words, why are you trying to convince yourself that you're right? You already know how you feel about yourself. Try to understand the other person. Okay? Now, I'm, I'm not telling you to do that because we already, we already dealt with your issue and we already dealt with they ain't going to change. So you ain't got to try to understand them. Move on. Okay. All right. Any questions? All right. So that takes me to 759. So that means we're going to stop right there and we will start with uh, verse 8. All right. So go ahead and read Proverbs 18. All right. So we all be ready to roll uh, when we show up next Wednesday. Okay. All right. May God bless you and may heaven continue to smile upon you. Drive safe. Yes, sir. Everybody, everybody, they got jokes today.